hi, I'm Josh and welcome to my channel and welcome to another day of Vlogmas. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you the Holoboka Flood PDX book tag. So this, like the other tags that I have been doing or am doing this month, is a themed seasonal book tag. And this book tag I, was created just this year by um, a booktuber who I've tagged below. And I was tagged by Hannah from Hannah's Books, which I'm very appreciative of, because I was really looking for a reason to do this tag, because I did love it. It's such a great seasonal tag. It's Hoka Bloka Flood, uh, which I can't say, is a festival that goes on in, I want to say it was Iceland, because there's this island in Iceland that had this, or this tradition of giving books as gifts because there were no trees on the actual island to be able to make the books. So to be able to give books was a unique and special occasion. So that's the idea behind this and that was why this tag was created. And I think it was a great idea for a tag. It really is so seasonal and so unique. Question one, the name. What is an unpronounceable or difficult to pronounce word that you love? Oh, I mean, can I use Jola Boca Flood? Because I do love that word. But I will also give you another one. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, even though the sound of it is really quite precocious. I know it's not a real answer, but I'm going to stick with that because I honestly couldn't think of anything besides the title of the book tag. I went back through my messages of the last several weeks with my friends, my family, and I couldn't find myself using a fancy word. So I, I was panicking and I couldn't, couldn't think of one. I, there might be some, but I feel like if it's a really fancy word, I don't necessarily remember it. It just it feels like it fits based off I read it somewhere and I try to use it and then I forget that I use it. I couldn't think of it. I just couldn't think of one even though I feel like there is one. Question two, the tradition. What is a new to you tradition or retelling of one that you love? Oh. And for the last several years, I have been rereading A Christmas Carol by, fuck, that's not A Christmas Carol. They're both very thin brown sides and so I just assumed it was A Christmas Carol. So A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. And I love this story because it's a lot of what I love. I said this, or we'll say this in my next tag, I think it's tomorrow. Because it's like a ghost story, so it's kind of horror gothic, also time travel, and it's just those two things are the epitome of what I love so much so that I can get past the fact this is Victorian literature or I think it is like the setting itself I have trouble getting into stories that are in this type of setting just because the dialect is hard for me to get into this one's so short so concise and I've heard it so many times that it's one I have no problem getting into because I just I love so much about the story and because of that I have made a tradition to read it every year and I've done it for like the last couple years and this will be I think the third year I've done it question three the adaption what is an adaption of something you love that was made even better Better or equal. And for this one, I'm not going to show the book because it's a big one, but it's Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. I haven't read this book in a while, but I do remember loving it. Not as much as the sequel, but I must say that the movie, I think, is such a fantastic adaption. It's an example of like a perfect adaption. And this is a, a book about two vampires. In a movie, the main characters are played by Tom Cruise and mm -hmm. Brad Pitt, and they're just such a great duo. And I, I watched that movie as a kid. It gave me nightmares because I was too young to watch it. But now I can look at it and I absolutely adore it as a fantastic adaption of this story. Question four, The Mood. What is the coziest book that you've read or expect to read this winter? And for this one, I went to an easy one here, which is Chronicles of Narnia. Chronicles of Narnia. And I say this just because of all the books I have, I think this is going to be the easiest one to read. All the books I have on my TBR. So I guess that makes it cozy. Does cozy equal easy? It does to me. It's also obviously heartwarming and shit like that. Question number five, The Discovery. Who was a new author you discovered this year that you love? I really want to say someone like A.S. King or Sean McGuire, because these are authors who I discovered my love of them, even though I started their books last year, but I really realized my love this year. But I'm gonna go with one that I, I literally discovered this year, discovered being I read their books this year. The first one I'm gonna say is Roxane Gay, someone I was very familiar with before reading her books, but I've never read three or four of them. One of them was edited in a collection, so is it really her book? It, I'm, tangenting. But her, her writing is really thought-provoking, but also very clever and witty at, at times. Next are two books by non-binary authors, actually. And um, Planca and Roja by Anna Marie McLemore is the first book and only book I've read by them. But I absolutely adored the writing and the fairy tale setting and the conversation around um, queerness. Another one I want to mention is A Quake This is the only book I've read by them, but this book was very powerful to me. And the conversation around queerness and gender, I, which is was really well done. It's a beautiful story, and I cannot wait to read more of their books. The setting. What is the deepest, darkest setting you've ever read about? 
and for this one i'm gonna go with fearful symmetries by ellen datlow and this is a short series of short stories it's normally her short story collections or anthologies rather have a theme this one does not necessarily have a theme just besides being horror and fearful and there were some in there that was really just really really demonic and one story in particular that was like a porter to hell and it was just so dark so demonic and i just i adored it praise satan it was just a joke it was just it was really good i really loved it it was so dark it was like so demonic and that's even though I'm not a Christian, I love it so much. With that said, I also want to give a nonfiction recommendation for this just because I feel like there are some real moments that are, need to be acknowledged and remembered. And I think Night by Ellie Riesel. This book was short, yet it had so much in it. It was so profound, so powerful. It probably one of the most powerful books I've ever read. And considering it's so short, it, it's, it's really impressive how he's able to convey so much in such little text. This is his recounting of his experience in concentration camps during this period and it was a really powerful book. It was very dark, very dark, and absolutely the darkest nonfiction book I've read. And quite frankly, while I mentioned Fearful Symmetries, I mean, this book, because of its realness, is far darker than that book. The, the way it hits is a lot different. Question number seven, The Hot Cocoa. What is a book that comforted you during a long night, literal or metaphorical? And this one I struggled with because I can't think of one. Like the last time I read a book in the middle of the night was like either Harry Potter or something by Darren Shane when I was a kid. So instead I decided to think of a book that I read around the time that I lost a family member back in August. And I remember really connecting to the book, even though the book itself isn't necessarily related to the death of my family member, or even something that I thought to myself, oh, this makes me think about the death. <laughs> Let me just say it. Uh, the Death of the Vedic Oji by Kwaki Mezi, so the same book I just showed you. This book was so beautiful, so powerful, and I guess the best thing I can say here is just that I was, ho I was struggling to read at times, and this book really helped me read, I suppose. Like it was just, it was something that was easy to get lost in because of how well it's written and how powerful it is. Question eight, the gift. What is an indie book you'll be giving this winter season? And I don't give any gifts. Usually when I'm giving a book, it's gonna be a really popular book that I think someone might be more likely to read. I just don't know a lot of people who read a lot of books, let alone books that aren't popular. Instead, I'll say Cast by Isabel Workerson. I've gifted this to a couple people in my family. I think I may have also gifted Stint from the beginning, but technically I gifted it earlier in the year. But the, the intention was where it to be a Christmas gift, but it doesn't really matter. Now, I will mention here a book that you could say I gifted myself, I guess. It's definitely from an indie publisher, and that is Once Upon a Time, edited by Todd Sanders. And this is a s sort of fairy tale, adult fairy tale, short story collection. And this has some beautiful artwork as illustrated by the cover. And I ended up buying this, even though I haven't read it yet, because I got a Nick Alley arc, and I realized that this book was like a limited edition. And I was like so excited about it that I ended up buying it. And I'm excited to get to it eventually. I don't know if I'll love it or not, but I did love the artwork and I love the idea of fairy tales. So um, hopefully that it'll be a good story collection. And those are all the questions. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and happy holiday. Goodbye.